PhD. Done. Well, technically almost. So yesterday I successfully uh, defended my PhD. Um, so I did like the whole oral portion um, and I'd already submitted my thesis um, and now I just need to make some very, very minor um, revisions to my thesis in order to um, have it super, super duper official. Um, but like my committee members signed the papers yesterday. Um, so that's very awesome. Um, and so what I did not expect was like just how much I would crash afterwards. Like, oh my God, like all the weight of everything and like, your brain can just like finally like breathe. So yeah, so yesterday afterwards I did the cartwheel and then I was like, Whew. but then there was like a party and then my parents were here and they made these great pumpkins with me. Um, and um, yeah, so I just dropped them off at the train station and I am just so, so drained. Like, oh my gosh, like, Oh, just in so many ways, like emotionally, mentally, physically, just exhausted. But before I go crash, I just wanted to fill you guys in on what yesterday was like um, with the defense because going into it was kind of like a, what the heck is this going to be um, for me? Um, and so since I've shown everybody every part of the journey and I want to try to make it more um, like approachable and less less scary like what the heck is going on when someone tries to earn a PhD um and so it's only natural that I fill you in on this part as well um so yeah so I want to tell you about the whole like defense process um and then some of the celebration stuff because I have like a bazillion pictures um and yeah and so th and thank you everybody who's been congratulating me sorry I can't like thank everybody individually but honestly like I just my feeds are blowing up and it's just crazy out of my mind um and I'm just so exhausted um but thank you thank you thank you so quick recap for anyone who's not familiar so basically in order to get a PhD in, in like sciences you have to um, do a bunch of research and then you write it all up in this long thesis um, which is like this written document um, sometimes it's called a dissertation um, so you and then um, you have to like orally defend the thesis so sometimes it's called like a viva but then there's also like a public presentation I'm not really sure about the terminology but here we just call it like it's the thesis defense and how it works is you give like an hour long um, presentation and to this presentation is to um, like you get to invite family and friends and stuff which is really awesome and then you um, afterwards they have for in my case thankfully it's a private um, questioning by your thesis committee which is a group of professors that um, so they've been giving you like in our, we have like periodic meetings with them like twice a year, um, like progress meetings. Um, and so each of those meetings, we had to like do a written report and then we had to give a presentation and they ask us questions and stuff. And so the one at the end is like the whole big thing, that sort of thing, but like so, but at a massive scale. Um, and you also have, for that one, we have an external examiner who is a person from a different institution. Um, who is sits on the committee and joins um and so then at the end of that um they i uh, they hopefully um say that congratulations doctor um and normally you have to make some like revisions to your thesis um hopefully not too many um but i've heard that like like my PI told me, so my PI, the PI is the principal investigator, like your boss, that basically everybody has to do at least some revisions. Um, so that's totally normal and you still get to be called a doctor even if you have to do some revisions. So don't worry about that because I was kind of like freaked out about that. Um, but anyway, so my, my um, presentation, so it was like a hybrid format. So it was just my lab and um, part of my committee was actually like physically in the room 
And then I had some friends and family on Zoom, um, which was really nice. Um, I strategically stuck my parents and my grandma in the corner right across, um, like, the podium. So, like, I was looking straight at them. And that made it so much easier to make eye contact with the audience. Um, so when I was giving my practice talk, my PI was right in that corner. And so it was, like, super intimidating because every time I'd look up, I'd, like, see her and I didn't want to see her cringe. Um, but I knew that my parents and my grandma and my... Um, the Snoopies that they brought for me because they really are amazing. Um, so that was, that was really, really helpful to look up and see as well as some of my friends and family on the Zoom screen. Um, so there was a little bit of technical issues, um, getting started. Um, so, um, some Zoom microphones not turned off. Um, and then they tried to mute the, that person and then they accidentally muted the whole room and then they couldn't hear and then, but anyway, that all got, uh, figured out thankfully during the introduction and not during my actual talk. And I was just like, so grateful. Um, so thank you, AV, um, for setting it up. It was kind of like, cause it was weird cause I had to, my computer was being confused, getting confused because it had to present in like Zoom and on the screen and yeah, but it all worked out and I got to use the laser pointer and the little like slide advancer. So that made me happy. Okay. So actually getting started. So, oh yeah. So this is just showing there's people on Zoom, some people in the room. Um, and so it starts, um, my PI, so that's my boss, remember, uh, Limor Joshua Tour. She gave me this really, really, really nice introduction, which was really, really sweet. Um, and then after that, it was all my turn. Um, and yeah, so I got to use my laser pointer, which I liked. Um, and so I just gave my talk and I think it went pretty well. Like I incorporated a lot of the feedback from my practice talk and my lab mate said it was like those improvements like were like super helpful. I think the main part too was like part of when I did my practice talk, they didn't give me the laser pointer until like part way through and then like so I was trying to like do things on my screen and then it wasn't making contact. Yeah. But anyways, between having the pointer and the like slide advancer thing, so I didn't have to be like messing with the screen and the having my parents and Snoopy's in the corner um, to look at really helped me make eye contact um, and really try to engage more with the audience. Um, and yeah, so I gave my talk. And then the cool thing about the thesis talk, as opposed to just like normal talks you give, is that you get to give like a really long acknowledgement section, like so long that your committee is looking at your phone, that their phones, and then you're like, oh, I should probably hurry up. But everybody does it here, at least. Um, so I didn't feel too bad because I really wanted to thank all these people that, um, especially the ones that had actually like joined in on Zoom and stuff. Um, and so my tip your typical lab acknowledgements, of course, but then I also um, gave a dedication to my Grammy, who I've told you about before, um, as well as other family members, friends. I'm not going to go into all of these people because um, they already heard this and you probably all don't want to hear this, but just know that it's like normal that you can give like these long acknowledgements, at least here. Um, and it's just like, it was just felt really great to be able to thank everyone, especially the people that were actually listening to me. Like the people I was thanking that was actually like watching me um, and could hear me thank them because from all over the um, world in the over Zoom, and it was just meant so much to me that they were there, um, and it meant really, really so much to me that my parents and my grandma were there, so, and that would not have been possible if it weren't for, like, all the fellow workers and the scientists and the vaccine, so I'm just so grateful, um, and so that's how I ended my talk. Um, so then there's, they take questions, so there were only a couple questions, there was one from in the room and one from on Zoom. Um, neither were too bad, um, interesting questions, I felt I could answer, so that was all good, uh, didn't get flustered, and then they kick you out of the room, so I look pretty happy here, but I haven't actually, like, done the questioning part even, um, I just felt like the talk went really well, and I felt like I got in the groove, 
and it felt really comfortable, a lot better than the practice talk. Um, and then, so they kick you out of the room so that they can like talk about what they want to question you about and that sort of thing. Um, so just a heads up. So they did that for like every committee meeting as well. So it really tripped me up the first meeting when you get there and then the, like they kick you out of the room to talk about what they want to question you about. And then they question you and then they kick you out and discuss and then they call you back in. Um, so I did was not expecting that during my first committee meeting and it really like took me for a loop when they're like, okay, you need to leave now. Um, and it's like, why did I get here 15 minutes early? So then you're just like pacing outside and stuff. But anyway, it was okay. Um, and so yeah, so the same sort of thing happened here. Um, so I tried to, but so frankly, like during this period, I could be with my parents, and my family and like hug them. And so um, that was why I was so happy. Plus my mom gave me a little Snoopy I could put in my pocket. Um, and I love Snoopy, um, if you hadn't noticed. But so yeah, so I was just feeling like, okay, I got this. I know I still have this questioning part, but at least like the hard part. Well, for me, I, for some reason, like I feel the questioning is like easier in the sense like I really don't like public speaking um and so that's like really hard for me so I was like super nervous about that um especially with like so many people that I love and admire like watching me I didn't want to disappoint and so the stakes were like it was like the scariest talk I've ever given um so that was over and I was happy. Um, and then, of course, the questioning remained, but that's like they're asking you stuff about your research. And it's like you've probably heard that scientists love talking about their own research. Um, well, at least for the scientists, it's true, um, especially because I can't normally talk that much about my research to anyone outside of my lab because of like not um, wanting to get scooped and all that stuff. And so like actually being able to talk in depth to these people um, I probably rambled on more than they wanted to hear. Um, but so the sort of questions, so they started out with really, so how it worked was apparently it's like tradition that the external examiner goes first. Um, and then the other people, um, like they, they went around, um, and the people like they had their list of questions. Like, so during the talk, like periodically they would like go down and like write something in their notes and it was like uh oh that doesn't look good or but it could look good it's okay <laughs> whatever either way um so i didn't really know how to interpret it but i just tried to like not t make too much of it and just kind of like not let it throw me th for a loop um so they come in they've so they've already read your their your thesis at this point um so they probably have questions for you based on that as well as questions from the talk um, and then just other things that whatever pops into their head, they can ask you. Um, but so my, my PI had told me ahead of time that it's like, what the, the point of it is like, they want to test you to your limits. Um, and so if you can't, if they reach that point or whatever, it's probably like past the time when you actually would have like passed. Um, so don't like get flustered and stuff and so like if you don't know something just say I don't know and like don't try to BS anything um and they're going to ask she warned me ahead of time that they're going to ask you to like speculate um and so that was actually like the first question I got was like this big speculative question um but clearly like speculate like don't it's not like BSing or whatever it's like what do you think how do you think this really fits in? Um, and what do you think is happening inside the cells and that sort of thing? Um, and so that was actually kind of fun because it was really cool to talk through some of my theories and then like have them like, like them. Um, and so that was really, um, awesome. Um, so yeah, so I had two of my committee members on zoom and then four of them were in the room and then me, um, and yeah, so they took turns like asking questions, um, nothing too bad. There were a couple that I couldn't answer that was like, I, it was like a specific piece of knowledge from like some paper, um, or like, like the name of some molecule that I couldn't remember. Um, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like school type, like questioning but of course remember like the questioning is going to depend on your committee members um 
And so the scariest thing, one of the scariest things for me going in was that, like, my committee members are, like, so diverse. They're from, like, all these different fields, and especially, like, my external examiner. I'd never met her before. Um, I'd never been questioned before by her. So I kind of knew better what to expect from the other people because, like, my other committee members, like, during those progress meetings, ask you questions. Um, but so here I didn't have that. Um, but she actually asked some really great questions, and... Um, seemed really engaged and interested, and I felt like I could answer people's most people's questions um, fairly competently. Um, and so it really just part what like I don't know. I guess from the very beginning, like thankfully the first question, um, I just felt like I kind of got in the groove and didn't get um, like so. If I get flustered early on, it can like totally screw me up for the rest of it. Um, but since it started pretty well, then I found, like, I got myself, I felt more comfortable, and it was more just like I was talking to colleagues about ideas and stuff, especially because, especially for the things that were, like, asking what your thoughts were, like, what you're, and really treating you like a scientist, like, what do you think is happening, not, like, what is the chemical formula for, you know, it's not that kind of questions, at least not for me, um, and so... It was actually, it felt really great um, to just, like, have those sort of conversations because it's, it's so hard, it's so hard for me because when I can't be, like, talking widely about my work with people, um, it's, like, my least favorite thing about science and it's, like, the comp competition and, like, worrying about being scooped and not being able to share unpublished work and it's just like I can't tell people what I really study you know it's like um just the I mean like not that I'm lying to you when I say I study argonaut regulation but they're just like I can't go into the details and I think the details are like the coolest part and like speculating and stuff and so I finally got to do that and so that was actually kind of fun like my parents said I was probably going to be the only person in the world that actually enjoyed their PhD defense like the actual defense part um so I guess kind of, because it kind of felt good. Yeah, uh, I guess it was a little bit fun. Um, but especially because, like, you know that unlike your other, like, unlike your committee meetings where they just happen, like, on a schedule, and so you could be totally unprepared for them, like, here you know that they wouldn't, hopefully wouldn't put you up, um, to do this unless they thought you were prepared um, and they want, like, they're not out to get you. Like, they think you're ready um, and this is, like, the final step to, like, prove that you're ready, but they, if you're not prepared, they shouldn't, um, like, advance you to that point. Um, but anyway, so I got through the questioning um, and then I wasn't sure how it was going to end, but it just, like, they got through the questions that they each had. Um, so I was a little worried based on my PI's advice that they want to like push you to your limits or whatever, that it, they would literally just like go until you crash or whatever. But um, really they just asked the questions they had and then they felt satisfied that I'd answered them. And um, so then they kicked me out of the room again. Um, so it was, it was a pretty short time out of the room. Um, so that was a good, um, but then I, I, I had a good feeling because I felt it had gone really well. And like, I feel like based on what I know from people's like experiences or whatever, like I've never seen anyone not pass, at least here. Um, and so I felt it would have had to feel a lot worse if it, if they were going to fail me. Um, so that was my thought process. Um, but yeah, so I'm waiting outside and then they call me in and as soon as they open the door, um, my committee chair sticks out his hand and says, congratulations, doctor. And so that was just really awesome. Um, so yeah, so he said, I just have to do some very minor revisions, um, to my thesis of, to the written part. Um, and so basically there's like one like reference or something that I need to add like a add more about this specific molecule that I mentioned um and then they <laughs> the biggest thing which is like such a problem for me like throughout everything is like I need to make parts of it are too casual and I need to make them more formal 
Um, which, like, it's hard. <laughs> I just laugh because I spent, like, so long trying to do that. Like, going through, like, after I do my initial word dump and, like, bumbly me. Um, and then I, like, fix things up and try to make them more formal. But apparently, still need to make it even more formal. Um, so that's what I need to do. But they said it really shouldn't take very long to do that. And then I'll resubmit that. And then everything will be super, super duper official. Um, so at that point... I go to HR and I like switch over from being a grad student to being like a post grad student. Um, so it's not like a postdoc, it's just like a grad student staying on a few more months to finish things up. Um, so yeah, so the question like everybody is like, so people say when you're doing a PhD, the first like the worst question, like don't ask someone like when they're graduating or whatever. Like for me, it's don't ask when now it's don't ask when you're leaving. Um, so I have a postdoc lined up in California, which I haven't, like, publicly announced where I'm going yet, but I'm really excited about it, but in order to get that, um, get to leave, I need to finish, um, up my, like, get this paper out, um, which is actually, like, the reason, like, one of the, the other thing that they said, like, in addition to those minor revisions, they said that, yeah, the, the other thing they talked about was they wanted to make sure that I had presented my work um, at, like, conferences and that sort of thing, um, which I have um, because I don't have, like, a paper out. Um, and so my uh, PI told them that, yeah, I just presented at a couple conferences. I'm going to present at another meeting um, and that I have a draft written. Then, um, so yeah, so then the committee seems like they were cool with all of that, and then, so yeah, so I get to be doctor, and then, like, so the first thing, they were, well, they, were, they went looking for pens to sign the paper, um, the, some of the two of the people were on Zoom, so then they had to figure out how to do that, but when they were looking for pens, and I saw my parents outside, and, like, I had to run out and hug them, and that was really great, and then after it was, like, officially done, they, like, ran into the hall. <laughs> And yeah, did a little cartwheel, was really happy, um, yeah, I was really, really happy, um, ran and got Snoopy, um, then, yeah, um, so then at that point I was getting pretty exhausted because, like, all of this is just, like, all the weight of it's finally off, um, but then later, oh, so anyway, the the questioning was about an hour, um, so we were told it would be, like, an hour to two hours, um, so yeah, it was about an hour, so it wasn't too bad, um, and then they had a nice little, like, celebration for me, so there was the room all set up, and they were, um, pouring champagne and also apple cider for me because they know I don't drink, um, and Amory's awesome and really takes care of us and our preferences, um, and, yeah, so, and then they brought out the hat, and so I'll tell you more about this hat tomorrow, but it's just, like, this amazing, amazing thing, um, and, uh, yeah, it was just really amazing, um, and cards, they actually gave me two cards, because I think two people had got both gotten cards, and they were being passed around, so then I ended up with two cards, um, but it was so sweet, just, like, everyone was so thoughtful and so nice, and, like, but then I was, like, really starting to crash because it was just, like, so much, like, just emotionally, like, physically, like, I've been working nonstop for weeks trying to get this thesis done, all of that, and then just, like, honestly, just, all, like, being social, socializing, socialite I don't know. I'm a, I'm a total introvert, and so doing, like, turning that switch on and being, like, Enthusi like socialism. I don't, what's the word? Not socialism, but like that. You know what I mean. Plan to go into the lab tomorrow, um, but I asked if I could work from home, and then she was like, "You should uh, take like the whole week off and just relax." Um, so I think I am going to actually take her up on that because it's not. It might be, like, the last time I could ever be able to do that. Um, and I have some stuff on my blog that I really want to, um, some, like, improvements and stuff I want to make. And I also want to do some, like, just puzzles and crosswords and all sorts of stuff and really just sleep. 
Um, but yeah. But hopefully this was helpful or at least interesting to someone who's wondering what's going on behind the scenes um, in a PhD defense.